Okay, so I covered this topic a while back on my blog, Tom's Big Spiders, but I've had several people ask me via YouTube if I could revisit the topic through videos. So I've been given a lot of thought on how to approach this a little bit more difficult than some of the other things I've done because I have a hard time catching footage of them actually molting or doing some of the things I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to give it my best shot, including creating a couple graphics for it to hopefully illustrate how the process happens and some of the signs you can expect to see when your tarantula is in pre -mold. So here goes. All right, so let's start with a brief semi-technical discussion of the whole process. The first part of the process is called the intermold. This is normal tarantula behavior. Your tarantula is acting normally, eating normally. Basically, anytime you feed them, they're going ahead and eating, and it's part of the growing process. This is when your tarantula is going to be doing all the normal things you would expect a tarantula to do. This is the part that doesn't stress out tarantula keepers. However, what's happening at the same time is it's developing a new exoskeleton beneath its old exoskeleton. This is how they grow. And as this exoskeleton starts to develop, eventually the tarantula have eaten enough that its body sends out hormone signals that tell it that it's time to stop. And this is the pre molt period. It'll stop eating, become lethargic and secretive. You'll start to see some changes in behavior and appearance. So this is the part that usually freaks some people out. Next comes proectasis. This is when the molt is imminent, and what starts happening is the tarantula is pumping fluids between the two sets of exoskeletons to get ready to molt. This is the point where the tarantula is ready to go. The skin becomes dark, fluid may be leaking from the joints of larger specimens, and tarantula may start to lay down a molting mat. Ectasis, or the actual molt, is next. This is when the tarantula expands itself to pop its carapace and basically slide and work its way out of the molt, almost like you'd pull a hand out of a glove. It can take a few hours to over a day, depending on the size of the specimen. As it works its way out of the exoskeleton, the tarantula is very, very vulnerable at this point and should not be touched or fiddled with. It's going to be, you know, glistening, kind of, it looks almost like a regurgitated mass, quite frankly. And stage four is post-ectasis. This is when the tarantula is unfolding its new exoskeleton because it's kind of folded up inside of the old one. It's filling out. It's hardening. You'll see a lot of stretching. The fangs during this period are soft, so it can't eat. And you should wait at least several days to even a couple weeks. In some cases, I've had ones wait even a month before you can offer them food again. It's important to note that a tarantula can lose a lot of its moisture during this process, so make sure it has a water dish and is well hydrated. Now, although this is a completely natural process, it's completely understandable that it totally freaks out a lot of new keepers, even some of the older keepers. So it's it can be very scary for people just raising tarantulas to look in one day and see this in the corner of their pen, a scrunched up wet mass on top of what looks like another tarantula. Obviously, it's mole. So people will continue to be freaked out by it, but recognize that it is a very natural process for the tarantula although it can be a spot where tarantulas are very vulnerable. Um, if they're, again, if they're not hydrated, this can cause problems. Uh, if you leave feeders in with them during this period, they are very vulnerable and can be attacked by feeders. So again, I understand the worry, but I do think that it's something that if you experience a few times, it becomes easier and easier, and it becomes less of something that you dread and more of something that you look forward to. So now that we've gone over the process, let's take a moment to review some of the signs and indicators you may see that will let you know that your tarantula is either in pre-molt or getting ready to molt. There are quite a few, and when you see more than one, it's a pretty good indicator that you have a molt coming soon. Okay, the first sign you'll be looking for is your tarantula will stop eating. This one's pretty obvious. As you see here, I have a Formictopus species blue. There's a large cricket right in front of it. And anybody that's ever seen a Formictopus species eat knows that the slightest disturbance in their enclosure, they're hopping on whatever's in there. And this young lady here is not in the mood to eat. She is actually in primo and positive of it. So if your tarantula or sling, whatever size it may be, suddenly stops eating, isn't showing interest in food, sometimes they'll gingerly walk around them. Sometimes they'll bat them away or even throw up a threat pose to them. Uh, other times they will bite and leave them, and we'll see an example of that uh, later, then chances are it might be in pre -mold. 
Next sign is your tarantula will develop a large, full, and sometimes shiny abdomen. The shiny part is more for slings. As you'll see here, this is a classy sling, a B classy sling that I used for an example in another video, and you can see the glistening off of the abdomen skin. It's very stretched and distended, so the abdomen is not only very, very fat, but shiny. Um, in the background on the uh, back of the abdomen, you'll see a dark spot there. That is not a sign of premolt. That is their urticating hairs. As they put on more size and the abdomen starts to develop some of that thick hair that tarantulas are known for, you'll see the abdomen also darken up, but that's usually for larger slings. For smaller slings, you're looking for that shiny, fat, distended abdomen. And here we have a G. rosea sling. As you can see, the abdomen is fat. It was shiny before, but when I went to shoot this video, we have an example of some another sign that you're going to look for, which is the abdomen not only being fat and possibly shiny, but dark. And you can see it darkening up, almost a bruised appearance to it, especially on the sides. That back portion that I'm going to circle in a moment is a mirror patch, but on the sides where you see that purplish kind of bruised look to it, that's usually fleshy toned if they're not in pre-malt. That right there the hairs beneath starting to show through. And I'm going to show another example in just a moment of an LP that is nice and shiny. And you can see here it's kicked hairs. Its abdomen is quite plump and distended and you can see it shining up. But that's not necessarily a sign. What we're going to look for is for that abdomen to eventually darken, especially on older specimens. And this is the same specimen right here. I believe it was only like three days later and you can see the deep dark like bruised look appearance with the hair starting to come in. That's the hair underneath. She would go ahead and molt a few days later. So again, the coloration of the abdomen is important as well. And in a moment, we'll show an example of something not to look for. But if it's plump, it's, you know, blowing up distended, sometimes shiny, especially if you have one that kicks a lot of hairs, the shininess will be apparent. And if that fleshy tone turns dark, then chances are your tarantula is in pre-molt. And here's my Formictibus species blue again. You can see here that her abdomen is starting to darken up quite a bit. Uh, right behind her back leg, you can see the skin starting to darken. Also the top, that is not just the hair or a mirror patch. That is the deep color starting to come in underneath. I'm hoping this young lady is going to molt soon. And you can see she's also quite plump. So again, when you're looking for some of these signs of pre-molt, what you want to do is kind of look for more than one. So just a plump abdomen, not necessarily in pre uh, Couple that with the fact that it's not eating, that it's starting to turn dark, now you're onto something. So this is what you want to look for, and it becomes easier to identify the more tarantulas you go through the pre process with. Behavior-wise, you want to look for your tarantula to become more lethargic, laid back, less energetic. I'm going to use my GBB here. My GBBs are traditionally difficult to tell when they're in pre because their abdomens don't look particularly huge. They don't darken up a lot. Their colors do tend to mute. But what they will do is slow down quite a bit. Usually when I open this enclosure, she kicks hairs at me, bolts around. You can see she's just laying low, sitting here, not showing much of anything. And... Back to looking for more than one sign. There's the last cricket I dropped in. I had to pull that out after the video because what she did was she killed it and left it there. So now we have a couple signs. She's looking a little dark in color. She's not moving around nearly as much. And she's refusing food and killing food. Now, if you've raised GBBs before, you know they eat anything that comes into that enclosure. They're voracious eaters. So this is definitely a female who is getting ready to molt. I'll be looking forward to a molt from her in perhaps a month or so. We'll see how long. Last time it took a little bit longer. And coming up, probably the one that confounds most people, but another huge sign this right here is my P. muticus or queen or king baboon enclosure and as you can see she's completely filled up the entrances to her den. She usually has two, one on each side. This is a tarantula that's in pre-molt, one of the big signs of them going into pre-molt, especially slings and some of the fossoria, not fossorial species, terrestrial species that normally don't dig, will try to bury and basically close themselves off. So you can see a little peek into her den right there. This is a tarantula that's ready to molt. So when they bury themselves, it's not a bad thing. It, they're not in any peril. You do not want to dig them up. More often than not, that's a tarantula that's in the pre-molt stage and does not want to be disturbed. They're protecting themselves. There's no need to hunt. There's no need to be out and about and possibly get caught and killed, although they're not in the wild. 
the best thing for them to do was kind of put up the do not disturb sign and close themselves off. So here's my E Campus Stratus. This one had opened up its den. It ate twice. It's a small sling. And don't be surprised if slings only eat a couple times if you give them larger meals. I did give this one a very large meal. Um, it gave it two halves of a cricket over the course of a week. It ate both, and as you can see, it started to fill in its burrow again. This was all completely open. You could see her inside easily before, and now she's filling it back in. So she's had her full. Her body is telling her she's ready to molt soon, or at least going into the pre-molt stage, and she's closing herself off to protect her from predators, the weather, and whatnot. So again, totally normal, and when you have a tarantula that's been eating really, really well and starts showing some of these signs, it refuses food, it buries itself, um, it becomes lethargic. This is, these are all signs that it's in pre-molt, very normal. I know it can be very stressful, but there's nothing to worry about. And then here we have my young adult female T. Sturmy. Uh, what we're going to see here in a moment is, one, she's hiding in her hide. She never uses her hide. She's always out in the open. So this is a sign. And here we have her. You can see right behind that leg, that purplish spot. That was flesh-colored before. It is darkened up right there. She is definitely in pre-molt. So we have a couple things going on here. A, she refused her last meal. B, her skin is darkening up quite a bit. And C, she's become a bit more lethargic and reclusive. So you put them all together, and we have a clear indication that this tarantula is getting ready to molt. Now, something to be said, the size of the tarantula can determine how long they are in pre-molt. It's a generalization, but larger specimens can spend a lot longer in it. Smaller specimens, it tends to be a quicker period where they develop a new body underneath, molt, and get out of it. Uh, there are some exceptions. I've had some Gramostolas species take forever in pre-molt, so just a heads up there. Now, how do you tell when a molt is imminent or coming any time now? Well, one of the first signs is many tarantulas will lay down what's called a molt or molting mat, which is a little web mat. For terrestrials, it'll be usually on the ground, sometimes curving up the side of the enclosure. For arboreals, they might do it underneath a piece of cork bark or up in a corner they build themselves a little cocoon or hammock that they will molt in. And then obviously a tarantula on its back is 99.9% .9 of the time getting ready to molt. Do not touch it. Do not fiddle with it. Do not flip it over. You need to let it run its course, go through the molting process. That's how they go on their backs. They basically pull themselves out and extract themselves from the old molt. Fiddling with them at this point could be deadly, quite frankly. So when you find a tarantula on its back, it's not dead. I've done this myself before many, many years ago when I first got mine, and I did the same thing, thought it was dead. It's not. This is what they do when they molt. And here I have a freshly molted Brachypelma baby slash Baumgartney hybrid, and I'll get into that in another video. But you can see how vibrant the colors are, and that's the thing. For our tarantulas to grow, they have to molt, so it's something we should look forward to. Look at the vibrant colors. I mean, she looks absolutely gorgeous. She was looking a little bit drab before this. Still beautiful. Here's her molt, so you can see the different colors. Now, as discussed earlier, they're not ready to eat right after a molt. They need to harden up. You can tell because their fangs will become black, but even so, for slings, generally, general rule of thumb, at least four days to a week or so, give them a chance to harden up. For adults, several weeks. I've had some wait even a month before they can eat, so don't rush and feed them right away. For larger specimens, it will take longer for them to harden up, and they usually know better, so if you drop one in early, they'll usually bat it away or not show any interest. So there it is. Hopefully this helps people out and hopefully I've answered most of the questions, if not all of them. Again, the best advice I can give is if you think your tarantula is in pre-molt, if it's showing all of these signs, then give it some space, give it its privacy, make sure its water dish is full, make sure if it's a moisture dependent species, it has access to a moist patch of substrate and then just wait it out. It's always well worth the wait when they molt. It's, I still get excited for molts, so it should be more of a joyous time than one that causes a bunch of apprehension or confusion. For those who would like to read the article, I'll put a link at the end. It's on my site, www.tomsbigspiders.com. Um, please let me know in the comments if I missed anything or if there's something else you'd like me to cover.